We all know that ground sampling distance, commonly known as GSD, is a fundamental concept to any mapping or inspection drone flight. But what exactly is GSD? How is it calculated? We'll break it down in this video. Hey everyone, I'm Varun, the founder of Hammer Missions, and I'm today going to talk to you about ground sampling distance. How is it calculated? And how do we set the right value during flight? Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And for all of those that are watching this on YouTube, click the alert notification to be alerted when a new video is put out. So let's st get started. So what is GSD? Ground sampling distance, as the name implies, refers to the amount of ground or surface area covered by a single image in flight. Let's say you're mapping with a camera facing down. Then this is the distance, basically the amount of ground covered by your drone per image whilst in flight. If you're flying vertically and mapping a tower or a facade, then GSD is basically the amount of facade surface covered by a single image in flight. You might see GSD frequently expressed as centimeter per pixel. Here's an important tip for you. The lower the GSD, the higher the resolution of the image of the flight and the more details you'll be able to capture in your images. GSD primarily depends on two main inputs. Number one, the altitude or this distance to the structure. And number two, the camera parameters. Let's have a look at those two in more detail. Altitude or distance to the structure of interest is the first parameter. Intuitively, this is easy to understand. The larger your distance to the ground or the structure, the higher is the amount of ground covered by a given camera's lens. So you'd expect the GSD to increase at higher altitudes or greater distances to the structures. The second parameter over here is the camera's parameters itself. This involves the sensor width, the focal length, the image resolution of the camera. Again, it's intuitive to understand that a camera's field of view, focal length and the image resolution would have an effect on the GSD. The higher the length of the focal length of the drone, the lower will be the GSD. How much is this effect and how do you calculate it? We'll explore that in the next section. Based on what I mentioned earlier in the video, we know that GSD has to be directly proportional to the working distance, that is the distance to the target structure, and indirectly proportional to the drone's focal length. Therefore, the formula to calculate GSD is shown on the screen above, whereby, the sensor width is the width of the drone of the camera sensor. The working distance is the distance to the target structure. That is the altitude in mapping missions or horizontal distance in vertical inspection missions. True focal length is essentially the true focal length of the drone's ca camera. This is in millimeters. Now, this is important to note that this is the true focal length of the camera, not the 35 mil equivalent. You can always calculate the true focal length of the camera using the sensor width and the horizontal field of view. Here's an example of how you might be able to do it. This is shown on the screen above. So over here, image width is essentially the number of pixels in the drone's camera image resolution. For example, 5,472 pixels. Let's take an example drone and work it out together. For a DJI Mavic 2 Pro flying at 50 meter altitude, the numbers we will plug in to calculate GSD are as follows. Over here, GSD is essentially the product of sensor width and working distance divided by the product of focal length and image width. Whilst it's good to know how to calculate ground sampling distance in flights, the key question is, should you be calculating GSD manually for every single flight? With Hammer missions, GSD calculations are automatically done for you every time you plan a flight. Hammer also takes into account whether the flight is a mapping mission, a roof inspection mission or a vertical inspection mission and therefore uses the altitude or the horizontal distance to the structure as the working distance. Isn't that great, right? Now I will show you how you can use Hammer missions to plan missions with the required GSD. It's really simple. All you have to do is pick the camera type in Hammer and Hammer will show you the calculated GSD based on the set altitude or horizontal distance in flight. If you also specify other parameters affecting GSD, for example, ground offset for roof inspection missions, Hammer will also calculate GSD using those parameters. Going back to what I mentioned earlier in the video, you, you might notice that to achieve the required GSD, you basically have two main parameters to play around with. 
You have the flight altitude or the horizontal distance to the structure and the camera type. Hammer allows you to play around with those two parameters seamlessly so you can achieve the best trade-off between safety, quality and costs. I hope this video will help you calculate GSD in your upcoming flights or better yet, provide you with a tool to automatically calculate it for you. If you'd like to learn more about other missions supported in Hammer or how to calculate other parameters specific to your flight, please visit our mission tutorials. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.